faculty and other staff is poor. And we have all of these kind of methods of communication going on, or sources of information, if you like. So we have emails, portals, Facebook, Twitter, newsletters. So stuff coming from all over the place. So that leads to a lot of staff feeling left out, don't really feel part of the organization as a whole, uh, which is an issue. Um, very few opportunities to meet at what we might call the village pump. Um, the Americans call it the water cooler experience. You know, so when you go for a break, you get to meet people. And that, that doesn't happen that much anymore. Um, it used to happen here more when this place was smaller, there were less staff, there was more opportunity for that. But as the place has grown, um, there is less, certainly less opportunity for that. It's difficult to connect with people in similar positions. It's, it's actually difficult to find, identify people in similar, similar positions and even know where they are. Okay. Um, there's an awful lot of stuff going on in the Institute. Some people are aware of more than others, but there is a lot happening all the time. There's also a desire for increased transparency, so we have a lot of stuff going on that people are not aware of. Or not aware of. And then we have this problem with silos everywhere. So departments, cliques within departments. You know, that's natural enough in, in um, all kinds of or organizations, but it, it is something that you want to overcome um, if possible. Okay, so that's one aspect of it. So just a slightly different theme than a quote from a former CEO of Hewlett Packard, and he said that if HP knew what HP actually knows, uh, they'd be three times more productive. Now, for a global organization like that, with um, billion, billion dollar profits every year, um, that's, that's a, a fairly um, significant statement. Um, the same may not necessarily apply to someone like Galaxy, but um, there's a vast amount of untapped knowledge here. Um, yeah. We don't know where it is, uh, or who has it, or how we can find it. And that's one of the, one of the challenges that we've had. Okay. And uh, this is where communities of practice might be useful okay, in overcoming some of these, um, these issues. Um, I assume that most of you are aware of what communities of practice are in some, at some level. Um, the idea has been around for quite a while. Uh, but basically there are groups of people who might have a common concern or passion uh, for something they do. And they learn how to do it better as they interact or meet, typically, on a regular basis. Um, you can have community practice of, of people who are in maybe the same profession. So civil engineers, for example, web developers, um, precision engineers, scientists, whatever it is. They have a common theme, they might want to um, you know, share ideas. Um, there's, a, there's a number, a number of benefits um, uh, that, that, that arise from being in a community which I go into. Uh, but it's, it's essentially about sharing knowledge about their work or their practice. Okay? Uh, it's about learning from one, one another about what they do. Um, and all of that would be within a social context that might maintain their identity. So the identity of what you are, of your professional practice, typically, is what they're about. That, that's, where they, uh, that's where they came about originally. Um, there are a couple of different um, types of communities of practice. Some of them are informal. Okay? Now, informal communities will perhaps um, come about in organizations where there's an enabling culture. Okay, so we probably say there wouldn't be an enabling culture here, necessarily. Um, and by an enabling culture, I mean one where people share knowledge freely with each other. Um, and so we certainly haven't got there yet. Um, th there would be a need, probably a short-term need, for uh, developing a community. Um, it would have a critical mass. And by critical mass, it, that simply means that it has enough people and enough interaction between them to survive and to be actually meaningful. Um, because some of these, sometimes these are formed, they don't reach that and then they just die away again. So you have one or two very interested people and then lots that are not very interested in one or two meetings and it, that dies away. So you need critical mass with this. In the informal ones, activity needs, tends to go up and down, rise and fall as, the, um, as it develops. Uh, they tend to have open membership and occur in organizations where people are together. Okay, so these would typically be physical face-to-face -face communities. The other type are more formal or mandated, so they might be mandated by the organization um, to tackle a specific issue or need. Okay, they, they tend to have formal expectations, so they're developed for a purpose um, by an organization, so they're mandated uh, pretty much with closed membership. Okay, 
Okay, so people are selected to join the community for a purpose, they fulfill their purpose, and they probably go away after that. Um, and proximity is not necessarily essential like that. So these tend to live more in a virtual environment, which is where we're going to come to. You can also have a high, most communities in fact tend to be a hybrid of, a hybrid of those two. Um, so some of the benefits, okay? It gives you access to the knowledge and experience of the other members. Um, for one, it allows you to build relationships um, with those who have that expertise. Okay, which is obviously very beneficial for maybe new staff members starting out in a particular discipline. Um, you can develop best practices through discussions um, and sharing of ideas. And certainly it can help to, to avoid reinventing the wheel. So it reduces rework and reinvention. Okay, so you know, if, if you want to do something, somebody within your community has probably done it already. Or if you have a problem, they probably have encountered the problem already. So if you throw the question out there, the chances are that somebody has the answer, okay, and it saves you reinventing the wheel as it is. Um, so, <laughs> as well as that, it would certainly help, um, again, you know, for newer people, um, decrease learning curves, keep up to date with what's going on within your community, your area of interest, your profession. Um, certainly for innovation, um, increasing innovation and speed of delivery is probably more relevant to um, to, to private, you know, profit-making organisations, um, and this is quite important. They, they do help in developing a community spirit and breaking down the silos that I was talking about. It gets people talking across the <coughs> organisation instead of in a purely hierarchical um, setup. Okay, so where does Yammer fit into all of this? Really, I suppose is where we want to uh, we want to come to. That's that's kind of what Yammer looks like. So uh, those of you that have used it already or have logged on know have seen it. You get a different view of it, but that's just one um, view of it. That's, that's in a particular um, group that uh, I'm a member of. Just to give you an idea of what it looks like. So something onto Facebook, those of you that use Facebook, looks you know, broadly similar to that. Maybe with less going on, uh, which is no harm. So it's a corporate social network, okay? I was originally set up to help organizations share information among staff and partners, so externally as well as internally, and it can be used for that. Um, discuss different issues outside of email, which I'll come to, um, and to network, okay, so building teams through conversations, likes and praises like you would have in, in uh, Facebook as well. Um, it's for all of those things, so there's a lot going on there, um, problem solving, discussing projects, um, sharing news and links, sharing events, uh, connecting geographically distributed teams, so where we have, we have departments across here, Thurlis, Clonmel, this thing can be very, very useful for people to start engaging across um, all of those campuses. Uh, finding local subject matter experts, so if you're starting off to, starting to use maybe OneNote for Classroom, if there's a group there for OneNote for Classroom, you can join it, you can go into it, ask a question, how do I use this, you'll find somebody who has an answer to your problem. Um, File or photo sharing, that can be done. You can share files, photos, videos, all of the stuff that can be done <coughs> on Facebook. Um, certainly will help new people to get up to speed. Um, and this, reduce email inbox overload, which I think everybody suffers from um, to a certain extent. And it can do much, much more as well. Um, so in terms of communities of practice then, um, just bringing the two of them together, we, we can use Yammer groups um, to create virtual communities. Okay, which would be completely online, probably but never meet or rarely meet face to face. Um, they can also be used, these groups can be used to support cops that actually meet face to face physically. So you can actually take your meetings offline, continue the conversation and actually capture the stuff you're talking about. Um, and they can be open or closed and that depends on the needs of the cop. Open would generally be better so everyone can see what's going on. But uh, there would be various reasons why stuff would be closed as well. Okay, so we already have a couple of them uh, established and they're getting up and running. One um, is for health and wellness, which Siobhan has started up. And there are 18 members signed up to that already with a number of others to follow. Um, so it, it's, there's a description there, community of academic excellence create new knowledge in the area of health and wellness. So a good example of a, community and you can see some discussions happening there already between some of the members 
Another one then is, is uh, computer networks, um, which is for people who are teaching on computer networks and staff who are supporting networks as well. So we're bringing in the, uh, the support staff into it. So we can have a conversation about how we use the network facilities here and uh, how we use them for teaching. Um, because there is always a clash between providing IT services for teaching and learning and how the academics might want to use the services. And you know, not everything can be provided. So it, it, it increases the understanding um, from both sides. And we have a lot of, of other suggestions from people who are interested. So you know, writing across the curriculum, how we can introduce writing into, into modules to improve students' writing abilities. Research methods is one that a lot of uh, postgrads are inter interested in. Um, Office 365 is quite new. Um, so that is one where, you know, if you want to find out how you can introduce elements of Office 365 into your teaching, um, start having a chat about that. Flip classroom, technology-enabled learning, blended classroom, all very topical um, and good suggestions and ones that, ones that we will certainly try and get up and running. And a bunch of other ones there, sports, campus development, and enterprise and innovation, and so on. So if you want to start a cop, all you need to do is really identify a team like that or like anything, it doesn't really matter, um, and find some other interested people and you can start it yourself or let us know and we'll help you, train you, all of that kind of stuff, okay? So uh, communication, our current favorite method of communi communication is email. <laughs> and uh, there's all sorts of problems with email um, and increasing problems. Email really replaced the telephone. People prefer it, a lot of people prefer it to talking on the phone now because there's a record of the conversation. Um, in my last job I used to get around 200, 200 plus a day so it becomes very very difficult to manage that and people really suffer from information overload or email overload and I know of people here that have given up, given up on email completely. They have thousands, thousands of unread emails in their inbox so they just can't cope with it so they just give up. So if you send somebody an email in here and you don't get a reply, that's probably what has happened, okay? So, you know, we'd be suggesting maybe that Yammer might be able to take away some of that traffic. This is what happens within a hierarchical organization as well. So the emails come down from the proper channels and may or may not get down here or eventually or whatever. And again, we're all familiar with that. The emails end up, um, you know, in our own email stores and all the information that we need is locked away nicely belonging to somebody else and we don't have access to it. And we get this, the disengagement epidemic down here. So a lot of us are probably down here at this stage and disengage from the organization as a result of a lot of that, okay? So we, we want to change that. So networked organizations find answers quicker, faster, this is what, if somebody has an idea at the moment, they email it out to all these people, they might talk about it with emails and eventually something will come back. With the likes of Yammer and community of practice, if you have an idea, you can get it out to your community and start a conversation about it. And everybody is involved in the conversation. So it has an awful lot of advantages over, um, over emails. So I just have a short video on that, if I can. Uh, <coughs> hopefully this will work. across the globe. We have hundreds of emails back and forth. Some are some are some direct to me, some to help improve content, files, photos, craziness. Sorry about the extend of the desktop. Doesn't all of Answering, everyone can see everyone else's response. They can Email is where knowledge goes to die. Let's say that you have a project that you're working on with 20 other people, different departments across the globe. We have hundreds of emails back and forth, some reply all, some direct to me, some to help the group. Content, files, photos, craziness. It'd be so much more efficient if everything were in that Yama group. Everyone knows what they're answering. Everyone can see everyone else's response. They can read it, they can comment, they can ask questions. It's searchable. Um, 
team members who come in afterwards can, can see the discussion. It makes it much more effective and efficient for everybody. Recently, I had a technical issue, and I had to send out about 10 different emails to get the right answer. Email is intended as very direct in communication, where social technology allows us to communicate with broad audience. You never actually know who your best answer will come from. It could be from someone who you didn't know existed. If I had used Yammer, I would have reached a wider audience and I would have had my question answered more quickly. And the next time someone else has the same question, they can find that response rather than having to email the same experts again and again. Others who saw the email days later were still responding to me. Whereas with Yammer, they could have easily seen that I got a great answer to my question. So next time you want to share a reference or resource, think twice before you just email it to one or two people. Instead, post it on Yammer because it's meter so much easier. Better results than we ever expected. So don't let your knowledge die in email. Join the Yammer network today and expand your influence. Okay, so that's uh, Yammer for email instead of email, rather. Okay, so um, I just got to take a quick look at it. It's in front of you, so I'll just do a, do a brief um, demonstration of, um, of the environment. So if you're, if you're in your, um, and I can see all, a lot of you have joined there as well. So if you're in your webmail, if you just click on the, um, the box up in the top left there, you'll see Yammer amongst all the other Office 365 tools that are available to you. Some of them are very good, like the OneNote um, class notebook. People want to try it out. Very, um, you can do a lot of interaction with your students, a lot better than the Moodle for that. Um, so a lot of new tools there that people can use. Okay, so um, this is my view of uh, of Yammer. Okay, so I have a number of groups there down along the left. Um, I have some messages here. I can see who's online now. Um, so I can see a number of you in here online. Um, so that's essentially what it, it looks like. So those of you that have used Facebook. Um, would see um, that it's 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 broadly familiar. Um, it, it has a familiar look and a lot of the same <coughs> stuff going on. Okay, so you will probably only see Limerick Institute of Technology and All Company. Okay, um, that'd be most people's view of it. Um, so the first thing you see up at the top here is what you are working on. Okay, it's kind of inviting you to say something to everybody, if you like. But are you, when you're in all company, just be aware that everybody can, can see it, okay? So Yammer tends to be broken up into groups. Um, this is where the groups come in, maybe for communities of practice. Um, so you can see up at the top left there, you have the home button. That will bring you to your home page. Um, and these are feeds that you're subscribed to, basically. If you're following people, like you might follow people in, um, in Facebook, you get their latest postings in there. So Michelle has put something up in the community there. Um, yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. Sure, it's just the same for everyone. Um, the, beside it, then there is a, an inbox. So you have uh, you have um, notifications and messages. You can actually send private messages within this as well. And then beside that, you get notifications um, of stuff that's going on that's relevant relevant to you. Um, and there are other stuff, things there as well. So you can invite colleagues to join if they haven't joined. And you can see what groups are available. So you can see, it gives you a group directory here. If you click on all groups, you can see, um, see all the groups that are there alphabetically. Um, you can see the people. So you can see who are, who are those people that are members of the network. Um, this is actually ranked by followers as well, so rather than alphabetically. Uh, but you can find anybody there by just clicking on the um, clicking on, on a letter and it'll, it'll, it'll rank them alphabetically as well. Uh, so there's different different ways of doing it. First name, typical um, of a system like this. Um, so that's that. Then we have these groups here. Okay. So again, the health and wellness one that I showed that that is now that is a community of practice. So that has been set up as a group. Um, I just go into it and show them if it, that's okay. Yeah. Um, so that's a group currently is 21 members and there's conversations going on there um, about, about different things. 
Um, another one that we've set up is computer networks, and again, you know, a number of conversations happening. Um, and you know, we can upload files and share stuff as well. So there's probably some, you know, files like that shared on, on, on Yammer, which is pretty, uh, pretty handy. Um, these can be set up for departments as well. So you know, you can set up a group for every for all your departments and have conversations. Um, it can be set up at, on a course level. So there's one for computer networks and systems management. So when we're doing programmatic review, for example, we, we use this to uh, stimulate some conversation um, around that. Um, so there's you know there's plenty of different uh, different uses for it. Uh, can I just ask you a question? Yes, certainly. Um, say in terms of like so when we log in as staff members, we automatically become part of the LIT, I suppose, database of, of, of members. Yeah. Are, do students have the same access? No. Okay. Students don't have access to this network they, at all. They don't. No. Is is there a network similar that I mean I know Moodle is there, but yeah. is there any way? So you you want to know if it can be used. As a, a class manager, it can. It can. It can. It can. Well, it can be used like that to engage with your students. Okay. So you could set up an external network okay. and invite all your students into that external network. Okay. So only you and your students would live in there. And is it free? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's all free. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So any, essentially anybody with an email address could join an external network like and that. And each time they join, I'll have to approve as the, as the model. There are, there are different settings on okay. it. Gotcha. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can get into that. We can provide training on, on, on all of that. So that's so that's Niall, so yeah. it's only as secure as the person receiving it. Let's say you do set up a student folder. Yeah. It's only as secure as you can you keep it. Well, no, or you the students is, are on an external network. Yeah. Nothing to do with this. The students can never never ever see any of this. Or do you set up a group? Let's say set up a group. An external network. Yeah. To, with students. Yeah. Are you then the overseer? Yeah, yeah, you have control of that. Sure. And could you accidentally End up letting it into the main network. No, yeah. no. So students' addresses are blocked out by. Your Absolutely, right. Absolutely. This is only open to people with at lit.ie addresses. Right. And each of the groups is controlled by the person who is the administrator of the group. So it's it's very secure. It's very secure. Yeah. Sorry, now if you set up a group like the health and wellness one, can you set up then sub communities underneath that? Groups, it's groups within groups. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. No. So then you are next to yes now. Yeah. No, you can't. Can I ask you again another one now? Yeah. Can you integrate with other social media? So can you put can you make posts in Yam or uh, migrate over to Facebook or to LinkedIn? You, you can just you can link them, yeah. You can okay, link you can. Certainly. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So you can include links in your posts. Same okay. as you can include files or okay. pictures or whatever you gotcha, want. Yeah. So that's it's, yeah. it's very easy to do it that way. Yeah. Um, so you have, um, in here you have a profile, okay, so if you click um, on your profile, it'll bring up all of the, uh, the different settings. So to show you your conversations, there's an edit profile link at the top right there. Um, so you can see here, there's stuff about me that I've put in, what I do, uh, my expertise, what I'm interested in, and so on, okay? You don't have to put any of that in, but you would be encouraged to. Like you'd be encouraged to put in a photograph of yourself. You don't have to. But you know, when you're talking to somebody, it's nice to know who you're talking to. Um, there was a time I knew every member, every single member of staff in the organization. But we have an awful lot of new people now, you know, with Thurlis, Van Mel, and uh, even here, a lot of the newer staff. I, I don't know them. I'd like to know them. This kind of thing helps us to get to know each other. So you have a conversation with somebody in a group or on the on the old company network, and you can see their face, you know who they are. So when you meet them, pass them in the street, then you say, oh yeah, how's it going, Paul or Owen or whoever it is, you know? So you would be encouraged to uh, edit your profile and include that kind of stuff. Certainly your contact information, very, very simple. You can put in whatever you want there. Um, so that's, that's your, your profile. Just, uh, you can also control your, your own settings um, in terms of, of notifications and stuff that you, uh, you receive. Um, so you can click on notifications there, and if it comes up, and say for Limerick Institute of Technology. So you can, you can get email notifications when somebody um, likes something that you put up, or when somebody puts up a comment in your group, and so on. So there's a lot of different things there. So you're in total control of, of the stuff that you're receiving, um, and the stuff you're getting notified about. This, this is, is available as well for your mobile phones, for your tablets. It's available everywhere. There's all kinds of uh, plugins for those things. So 
Um, so, you know, if you have it set up on your phone, you don't want a notification every 10 seconds, you can turn it off. You're in complete control um, about when and how you use this. Okay? Um, there is a, there, there's a, a, a help section there as well, which uh, links externally to Yammer Help. So you can find out anything, anything you need to know. There's a ton of uh, instruction and videos out there as well, and I'll start putting some of those up so people can, uh, can get used to it. So that's the, the Yammer support um, group. Um, it's a couple of external networks that we do have access to automatically. So one is called Office 365. So you can get access to that on request. Um, and I've just put up the, I, I joined a couple of groups in here, and one of them there is OneNote in Education. So no, you know, if you're interested in using that for your, your, your students, go in there and have a look around. There's tons, tons of stuff in there. You know, links to blogs, links to, to tips and tricks, all kinds of stuff. So, so no, you'd be encouraged to, uh, to use that. Um, the, the best way of, of using Yammer is to just kind of dive in and have a go. Um, at the community of practice level, we provide training for our communities, uh, both in how communities work and in using Yammer groups and setting them up. The groups are very easy to set up. So you can create a new group for anything you want. Uh, typically, it would be an internal group. You give it a name. You add members yourself. You can invite other people to join afterwards. It can be a public group or a private group. OK, so public, anyone in the LIT network can join. doesn't mean public outside of here within LIT. Our private then is only for approved members. Okay, that's the difference. So commu some of the communities will be private, some will be public. It depends on the, the choices of uh, the people that are in them. Um, so that's that's a really, really quick overview of Yammer and there's a lot, a lot more a lot more to it besides. Um, so if I can get back to where I was on the presentation. Yep. Share everything so the programmatic review. Yeah. Could, uh, the update, the most updated document there live, and people can yeah. work yeah. on it live. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So just just as an example, I suppose, Michelle, if I if I just uh, maybe very quickly, just um, I have I have a test uh, test group here. So if I want to um, maybe maybe post a file to this, I just upload it from the computer. I have one here. Um, Okay, so I want to share this with everybody in the group. There's nobody in it. Yeah. So as an example, okay, so that that puts that up there straight away. Okay. You know, and you can just click in there and um, it put it up, and you can you can download it, whatever. Okay. So it's on there. You, know. you can't do live editing. On, a doc, on, a, on something. No, it's not designed for that. It's not. It's not designed for collaborating on documents. There are other. To there are other tools in, okay. in Office three six five for doing that. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. And there are there are other uses. Um, and you know, and I talked about maybe other. You're replacing email to a certain extent. Conversations is one. Um, we get a lot of emails from different um, support groups to all staff. So rather than, than, than having that, we could move towards a model where, you know, all of these guys are on Yammer. Um, you can subscribe to them. So if you want to get if you want to get posts from Word FM, you can sign up and you'll get them. And you're not getting emails in your inbox about it. You know, so that's another way where we can uh, we can we can swap the email traffic, and it's a way for different groups to get their messages out to um, to all of the staff as well. Now, is there any engagement from executive management in? Yeah. They're interested and supportive, yeah, yeah. But generally speaking, Paul, the way that these things have been proven to evolve in organizations is from the ground up, not from the top down. If you try and implement, and I, I found this when I was in, in computer services, if you try and implement systems as good as they might be or as useful as they might be, people don't tend to use them. But when they, you know, when they come from the bottom up, there is a greater chance of success. So they're fully supportive. Absolutely. And it'd be great to get some of them on it and using it, which we will ultimately, yeah, I think. I think even if one or two yeah. Yeah. more informed members were. To yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, would, it would certainly help. I mean, you know, as well, management buy-in is a, is a very, has to be a very big part of, of anything, anything like this. But they are aware and they are supportive. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. But are kind of taking a hands-off approach at the moment, which is fine. Um, 
So we have other uses as well. I mentioned departments, so every department, every course board, every course can have its own its own group. Can be used for programmatic review, can be used for project groups, whatever you want, it, um, and so on. Okay. There are ways of making it work for you. Um, active listening is not just listening. All of these things have what we call lurkers in the network. So people who, who it's, and it sounds like a very bad word, but actually lurkers are good because they're people who are there. They're there to get information. They're not there. It sounds really negative, but it's not for a bad purpose. Obviously, in something like this, anyway. Uh, but active listening would be encouraged for you actually follow and learn and maybe contribute as well. Um, you can follow people that, uh, that you know or like or are interested in. Um, and again, you know, you can get receive emails. I was talking about notifications. You can change that. Um, if you don't want them annoying you, you can just go in whenever you want and so on. Um, certainly join networks like the Office 365 network and groups, um, which are only for LIT staff. If you're interested, start your own groups if you're interested. You'd certainly be encouraged to do that. Um, you know, and find out what you like and you don't like about it, and let us know as well. Um, that's that's how, how it's going to improve. Um, again, you'd also be encouraged to post updates, share documents. So I put up a learning uh, theory map there a couple of minutes ago. There's all of the learning theories um, on it that are ever known. Very, very interesting, came across it the other day. I'd share that with everyone, something that everybody might be interested in. Or a group. If I was in a group on, on um, pedagogical skills, um, or technology enhanced learning, you might put up that, for example. Um, so share, share stuff. If you come across stuff, you know, we're all in the same game here. We're all teaching students. So if you come across something that's interesting, put it up there. Stick it out into our company. Let everybody see it. Um, ask questions if you need help. Um, look for feedback and new ideas. And uh, do certainly react to what others post. So again, if I put up something like that, that map and I get, I get 12, 13, 25 likes, I know it's useful. I know people want to see that kind of stuff. Even if nobody comments on it, at least you know it's of some benefit to someone. So do that, you know. Hit the, hit the like, um, the like. Um, there's a couple of other features there that I didn't go through, but uh, like praising and, um, and announcements and stuff, but they would be less important. So it's really about making Yammer a conversation space. Uh, so lurking. Sorry, no, yeah, in terms of, say, inappropriate use, yeah. how do you deal with situations where staff inadvertently yeah, yeah, sure. refer a derogatory term? Yeah, I'm, 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 coming, I'm coming to that. Okay. Apart, apart from it all being covered in the acceptable usage policy, which you did sign up to by, um, by logging on, but it's the same for any, any of the LIT networks. The heat of the moment, really. The email is the same. Yeah, 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 but you can, you can delete, you can delete stuff. If you make a post, you can delete it. Uh, but yeah, obviously you have to be careful about that. Um, so if this thing is going to work, people do have to engage with it. Um, and for people to engage with it, I think we need to understand um, that it has some value. Um, if, if you don't see any value in it, then you're not going to engage with it. But value does come from using it. Okay, It's the only way you're going to actually understand the value for you, if it has any, is by using it. Okay. Um, so, so there is a bunch to of... To get trained and coached, where do you go? Talk to me. Just talk to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, eventually, it will end up in computer services, but for the moment, I'll, I'll handle that stuff. Um, so it, we, sometimes we see on Facebook, we see a lot of this uh, stuff going on. So, you know, I mean, try and make posts relevant. Um, not nonsense. Um, and there, Paul, you're talking about that, you know, this kind of stuff, obviously, we don't, don't want to do that, but it might, it might arise. Um, so we try and be constructive um, and comment on people's work constructively. Um, and all of this, this kind of stuff, that, you know, that, that would be fairly um, common amongst any social media uh, platforms. Uh, but the, the thing is to remember that we're all involved in a working environment here. It is a social enterprise, social network, but it is for work. Um, as opposed to social activity. That's not to say that you couldn't form a, a community of practice or a group for I don't know, staff soccer or meeting for nights out. You can, you can. It doesn't matter. Why not? Like anything you're interested in. Things outside of here. If there's a bunch of people are interested in flower arranging, set up a group. You can talk about it. It's there. It's there for all of that kind of stuff. Um, so just a couple of uh, things that might be included in the policy, uh, Paul, around 
uh, some of the stuff you're talking about. So, uh, you know, to make it work for everyone, it is a conversation with the LIT community. Um, so obviously be polite, uh, be aware, confidential information. You know, and this goes for email as well. People have this notion that email is a private <coughs> uh, Email is totally public. Once you hit the send key on your email, you have no control over where that email goes. None at all. Totally dependent on, on who you send it to to control it subsequently. Write a letter if you want to go ahead. That's it. Yeah. So, you know, the saying goes, you shouldn't put something in an email that you wouldn't put up on the notice board in the street. Okay. Bit extreme, but, yeah. But you know where I'm coming from. Let's just say that to... So, so on that topic, community. is this available under freedom of information for outside people? Yeah, it would be. Yeah. It's unlikely that Anton would end up on this that would be of interest to people under FOI shames, but it is absolutely the same as email, yeah, yeah, because it's stored on, on our <coughs> servers, yeah, absolutely. So confidential information, again, governed by our policies. Um, certainly you wouldn't put confidential stuff on, on the, the all company group. You may put some confidential stuff um, in private groups, okay, but you know, confidential as well is, um, I suppose has, has various levels of interpretation. Um, so not, not to scare people off, this is just to be practical, practical about the use of it, you know. Um, and uh, to be smart, so it's, it's, it's very easy to post um, something into the all company group. So if you want to put something into the group that you're in, or the group that you intend to post in, make sure you're in the group, and not in all company. Or you can delete stuff, but this is all in real time. So you would have seen messages maybe popping up there, um, as, they're, as they're posted, it comes up straight away. So just remember that as well. So just, just be smart and be responsible again. Um, and you know, we're governed by the, uh, the, the standards and documents for um, all of the other LIT stuff as well. So um, polite, aware, smart, and responsible. And um, really what we're talking about here, we're trying to get this done just to finish it up. Um, any, any implementation or initiative like this um, is really about culture. This is not about the technology. This tool, it's there, it's implemented, it's really, really easy to use. But there is no great learning curve for anybody in using it. It's about the culture. So 80% culture, 20% technology. We're not, we don't have a culture where we use this kind of stuff. So this is what we need to work on, and that's, that's the problem that we're faced with in trying to get this stuff, um, stuff in. So just, you know, finally, I just say just dive in, have a go. See what it's like, see if it's for you. The more people we get on it, the more information that's going to be out there, um, and the more interesting it's going to be for everyone. If everybody decides we're not going to use it, then it'll die. Like a lot of other things that have died in the past. Like the internet the portal, you know, they're all very static ways of presenting information. No interaction, people really don't look at them. This hopefully will be different. Okay, that's, uh, that's it. Any other questions? Yeah, if you've liked something, you want to see your feed liked, is it possible to bring that up like you would as say Twitter or Facebook or whatever? Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. see your, your own activity. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And now just in terms of group size and that, is there any, you know, what's the kind of optimum group size? Because I know Her if, groups, if, they're, if they're big and people aren't posting and responding, yeah. they're being able to be kind of tight. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they can, they can, yeah. I, I would say that's up to the communities themselves to control. Um, every community would have a leader. Generally speaking, they're the people who are come up with the topic and are most interested in it. Um, they can control who joins, um, who is let in. That can become an issue. I, I'd suggest it's less of an issue for virtual communities maybe than than face to face. Face to face communities tend to be smaller mm. by virtue of the fact that they meet physically anyway. Uh, but there, there's no there is no um, optimum size. But it can be a problem, yeah. If you get too many lurkers, non-contributors in a group, then it can become problematic because it, it, it scares people off posting, yeah. yeah. Now, the, uh, the Daily Digest email that comes after yeah. you join Yammer, um, does that retain messages even after they've been deleted? So if you message someone in Yammer and you delete it or for whatever reason, yeah. It's captured in an email for the more. It is. It is. If you if you haven't deleted it before, that email is compiled and sent. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you know, be, you just have to be careful. 
Um, you know, Paul was saying it, it can happen that you know people might get angry or for whatever reason and might have an argument on this. If, 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 yeah, whatever, yeah. If that happens in groups or in communities, it's really up to the moderator or the leader of the community to you know to stop that and nip it in the bud um, and make sure it doesn't happen. Um, if you post something like that on all the all company group, everybody can see it, yeah. and it could be an issue. So we'd hope that that wouldn't happen, certainly. Um, so that's you know that's where the awareness and the care and uh, responsibility comes into. It. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Um, anybody has any questions on any of this stuff? Just email me or Yammer. Send me a message on Yammer.